Hello everyone. Uh, I'm currently in the process of scripting a video and uh, you'll have that somewhere within the next week or so, but in the meantime I wanted to talk briefly about a certain variant of comedian that I've been noticing uh, likes to, uh, I don't know if the word is disparage men or ridicule men uh, at the expense of uh, his gender for laughs. These comedians, uh, people like Louis C.K., people like uh, George Carlin occasionally, uh, which I both love, you know, I think they're great comedians. Uh, I'm a Dave Chappelle and Richard Pryor man myself, but the, these are excellent comedians. But every once in a while, unfortunately, they decide to go on a rant on the differences between men and women. And it seems to follow a general pattern. And this pattern uh, typically revolves around displaying or portraying men as th these sex hounds um, that really can't get enough of sex and really are and really are lucky that women ever decide to give us sex right and so in the link box is a bit done by Louis CK where he talks about uh, men objectifying women by you know seeing them only as as pussy you know he goes on this big long rant about how men you know don't talk about hey let's go meet some girls like they did in the 50s uh, is what he said and uh, let's go get some pussy now is the new reality well of course this is a result of porn and uh, the proliferation of porn on the uh, worldwide uh, internet and things of that nature so uh, that's a natural consequence of uh, a new innovation being brought into human interaction but um, then he goes on a rant and says you know we're so lucky that women do us the grand favor of having sex with us and he goes through a simulation of how men look and behave when they're having sex and he just portrays it in this uh, light that makes it look as though uh, women are, are, are bestowing this this grand favor on us and that men don't even do any of the work and that uh, women make sex look good and we're just these participants along for the ride and Essentially, the whole thing revolves around how amazing women bestowing sex onto mankind is and how how uh, goofy and, and intrusive and awkward we make it. And I sometimes speculate on why comedians uh, do this, because this is a recurring theme in modern comedy. And I think what it is, is that uh, this revolves around several things. Uh, first and foremost, a, a, a sexual strategy. Right to show women, uh, and we've documented this in the manosphere thoroughly. But uh, the sexual strategy of being the you know the one man that's different, the one good man, the one man that doesn't objectify women. That's part of a sexual strategy, and that's part of a disarming strategy. Because frankly, what is comedy? Right, is disarming people, emotionally disarming people uh, via laughter and laughing about some some pretty uh, serious subjects sometimes. That's why there was such a controversy over uh, Daniel Tosh's rape jokes. He was trying to bring uh, to light a serious issue via comedy, uh, and he was doing it in a way that made fun of rape, but in in the theater of comedy where uh, essentially nothing is off limits. People joke about murder and violence and, and all of these things, all of these taboo things in our society uh, on the comedic stage, and they do it as a way of disarming people and uh, letting them know that no, this isn't, uh, this isn't, uh, you're not in any kind of imminent danger because we're discussing these things and you don't even have to embrace these ideas uh, like rape or, or the validity of rape or murder or, or any of these things. You are not co signing murder or rape if we joke about murder or rape in a comedic setting. Uh, and this disarms people and allows people to, to kind of uh, let their guard down and really discuss these uh, heavy topics without any guilt. So there's a sexual strategy involved, but also there's 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 another level to just, you know, appealing uh, to the female sex for the purposes of mating. This person, Louis C.K., does this as his career, and he's trying to make money, right? The stigma uh, is so strong of being accused uh, of, even accused of uh, being anti-female or being portrayed or viewed uh, as anti-female by women at large uh, in our society that it ruins careers. You can potentially have your career ended just by the public viewing you. If if your of course if your income and your 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 financial gain depends on how the public views you, and in the case of the comedian, it depends on whether or not the public views you as funny or not. But if you are viewed as anti-women uh, in any light, 
Uh, and if your uh, funds, if your living uh, depends on whether or not people view you in a certain way, you can have your career ended by not supplicating to the female hive mind. And this is what I believe Louis C.K. is doing here in his little rant. He's uh, telling women that he's not a threat to them. He's telling women that he's willing to throw men under the bus for their approval and, and their dollars. That's just my theory. And, and this, this force, this societal inquisition, uh, that is the female approval process is is really something that will decide uh, the fate of uh, certain social political movements uh, if we're not careful the men's rights movement the men's movement in entirety uh, I saw an episode and I know you guys are gonna laugh at me for watching this but I saw an episode of uh, the Netflix original series or not an episode the whole series really a Netflix original series uh, Orange is uh, the New Black Right, And I know you guys are going to ask me, well, why would I waste my time watching this? Well, I think it gives a lot of insight into how the feminist mind perceives us, right? And this is written by a feminist author, after all. And, you know, the show wouldn't be so bad if it didn't have such blatant allusions to the feminist mindset that views all men as, uh, as, as being part of some grand patriarchal conspiracy theory that are at any given time benefiting from a multitude of privileges that women don't have access to. I remember there was a scene where uh, the warden of the prison, or I believe it was the assistant to the warden of the prison, is uh, talking about a transsexual inmate. This is a man who uh, had uh, gender reassignment surgery and to become a woman and the warden is commenting on this she's a female uh, the warden and she says well I could never understand why a man would choose to go from a man to a woman it's like winning the lottery and giving back the ticket right and so this is the kind of naive ignorant belief uh, that uh, feminist minded women especially have that men are uh, uh, under a constant uh, alimentary status uh, provided to them by the forces of patriarchy, the non-existent patriarchy that, you know, really uh, has never existed uh, throughout history. But in this series, and again, I recommend you guys watch this because it gives a lot of insight into how feminists perceive us and how the uh, perceptions of the men's rights movement especially is shifting uh, according to uh, how feminists want to react to our gains in media and in, in in society as a whole this 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 power this power that you know any kind of uh, social movement has to be sanctioned first via the perceptions of the female and their approval process uh, this force is now being wielded very subtly uh, especially in this series you can see examples of it uh, very subtly against the men's movement and they're starting to formulate their their uh, plan of attack which is in my opinion to portray us as dangerous as potentially violent and at the very least socially maladjusted. There's a scene uh, in Orange is the New Black that portrays uh, one of the high-ranking officers in the prison who watches over uh, this female-only prison and he's a man and he hands over uh, to one of the main characters, I think it was the protagonist, uh, Piper, he hands over a book to her and this book was Hannah Rosin's The End of Men and he kind of gets this crazy wild-eyed look in his eyes and he says this is the plan this is what they're doing they're making men obsolete right and and he kind of has this crazy look like he's this uh, sad lonely desperate little man who's clinging on to any kind of uh, who's looking to supplant uh, his misery by latching on to some kind of social movement to give himself a veneer of social acceptance right it's really important I think I think it's really important for people to watch this Right. So if you can stomach it, if you can sit through two seasons of, you know, feminist whining, uh, I highly suggest that you watch this series. Right. Because uh, it's important to know your enemy. Anyways, gentlemen, uh, as I said, videos coming soon or scripted videos coming soon. Uh, and thank you for listening.